Welcome back to Breast Love Campus. A little bit about seeing the face of Tzadikim. There's this term in the Gemara called Lakbil Pnei Rabo. To receive, to greet the face of your Rav, your Rabbi. And the Gemara gives an amazing story in Chagiga of how Rabbi Yudha Nasi and Rabbi Chia, they were traveling together and they passed through a village and they asked the villagers, perhaps there is a Torah scholar who resides in this village? And he said, yes, but he's blind. So Rabbi Chia, he told Rabbi Yudha Anasi, don't go, it's beneath your dignity. You're a prince, you're the prince, the Rabbi Danasi, the leading rabbi of the generation. And this blind rabbi will not properly respect you. It'll be a demeaning act on, on the, uh, based on the level of your greatness and your honor of being the Nasi, the prince. <clears throat> so Rabbi, Rabbi Noah Kadosh didn't accept Rabbi Chia's argument. And he argued with him why, yes, even though he's blind, it's still credited that we go to see him, to receive to greet his face. So they both came to greet the blind sage and he was very happy and he gave them an amazing blessing. The blessing was that just like you have come to see someone who cannot see, you have been, you have made yourself seen, you are seeing one who cannot see, so too I bless you, may you be seen by the one who is not seen. In other words, the Divine Presence. Just like you've come to see the one who cannot see, may you be seen by the one who is not seen, referring to Hashem. And Rabbi Yuda heard this amazing blessing, and he like told off Rabbi Chia, and you wanted me to lose out this blessing? <laughs> you know, you, you, by not, you told me not to come, and I would have lost out this amazing blessing. And then they asked this elderly sage, where, from where did you learn out that it's such a big thing, that you gave us such an amazing blessing? So he said he had heard, from another sage, Rabbi Yaakov, from the village of Chitaya, who used to visit his rabbi every day, just to receive his face, just to see him every day. For sure, he also learned by him. But every day, this Rabbi Yaakov would go to his rav. And now, when, even when he got old, and when he got old, and it was very difficult for him to go to his rabbi, his rav, his rav said, stop, it's, it's hurting you, it's hard for you, you don't have to kill yourself to come to me. So Rabbi Yaakov said to his Rav, the verse teaches in Tehillim that someone who sees Chachamim Yamutu, it's a, I think it's Psalm 59, I forget exactly which Psalm, but where King David says that someone, Vichi od la netzach, yireh Chachamim Yamutu, that the verse can be understood that someone who sees Chachamim when they pass on to another world, then he merits long life, to live eternally, long life. So he said this applies when the tzaddikim die, all the more so when they're alive, to, that you, you merit long life. He says, you want to take this away from me? Chas shalom. I'm going to continue coming even though it's hard for me and I'm old, to come to see you. So here you see something amazing stressed about seeing the face of tzaddikim. Rav Nosen went a step further, and Rabbi Nachman also, and they explain that seeing the face of tzaddikim is not only and not necessarily seeing the physical face of the tzaddik, but learning the teachings of the intent to receive from this tzaddik. Rabbi Nachman teaches in the Kut Imran that the face, the countenance of a tzaddik is to be found in his teachings, in his writings. So when you sincerely, with an open eye, not a critical eye, but an attitude of wanting to receive, when you will learn the books of tzaddikim with that attitude, it's like you're looking in their face, directly in their face, as opposed to someone who's a big shot, he's a learned guy, and he's very critical about every single detail, and he's, and he's coming to learn a book, but not often tend to receive, but to compare what he knows and with the book, and to start making intellectual arguments and stuff like that, such a person is not looking at the face of the tzaddik. It has to be with the intent of having submission and faith, and you're, it's as if you're seeing the face of the tzaddik. And to finish off with this little story that... Rav Nachman Tulchiner was a disciple of Rav Nosen. He was born after Rabbi Nachman passed away. He was named after Rabbi Nachman. That's why he's called Rav Nachman of Tulchin. He once sighed to Rav Nosen and he said, Oh, if only I would have seen Rabbi Nachman's face. If only I would have seen Rabbi Nachman's face. And Rav Nosen like rebuked him. He told him off and he told Rav Nachman of Tulchin, And who do you think saw Rabbi Nachman? Yosef Paronik? Yosef Paronik was a Jew who lived in Breslev and he had a little tiny ferry, ferry boat that
that he took people across the Bug River. If you're familiar with the city of Breslau, Breslau there's a river there called the Bug River. And this Yosef Paronik, the name Par Paronik in Yiddish means like a tiny boat, a tiny ferry boat. He used to take people across the river and he praised himself that he had the merit of seeing Rabbi Nachman because many times Rabbi Nachman went on this Rabbi Yosef's ferry boat to cross to the other side of the Bug River in the city of Breslov. And he would praise and, and boast, I saw Rabbi Nachman, I saw Rabbi Nachman. And Rav Nassim told Rabbi Nachman Tulchener, you think Yosef Paronik saw the Rebbe? To see the Rebbe means to see the sechel, the intellect of the tzaddik. To see the face of the tzaddik is to see the truth of the teachings of the inner dimension of the tzaddik. That's seeing the face of the tzaddik and not just looking at a picture on the wall or something like that. To see the actual tzaddik means to see the essence of the wisdom of the tzaddik and can be applied today by looking and learning the teachings of the tzaddikim with the sincere attitude of wanting to receive. It's like you're looking directly in the face of the tzaddikim.